looks like a castle. You have to go, and Montcalm is the name of the street that he was living on. Hmm. Balmany. Can you tell me some of his credits? Credits? Well, he did get three Academy Awards. Great. The first uh, Academy Award he received from Spellbound back in 1945. Oh, what a classic. And then uh, his second score was just maybe a couple of years later, he also re received the Academy Award for a Double Life with Ronald Coleman and Charlie Winters and uh, Edmund O'Brien. Great actors, yeah. really. How about a couple more credits? And then, of course, the third Academy Award he received from the music that he composed for Ben-Hur. Wow, what a classic. Charlton Heston and uh, Martha Scott, I believe. Wow. He did the big movies, didn't he? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, any, strong... com any compositions you love by him, like classical or...? Uh... Now, he has a book out about, uh, about uh, autobiography mm -hmm. where he's calling the title A Double Life, mm. meaning uh, maybe he took it from the title of the movie with Ronald Coleman, but the book itself is based on his life as a composer for films mm -hmm. and also for the concert hall. Wow. So that is his double life. He says in the book uh, that uh, I scored the films and I also wrote music for the uh, concert halls. And uh, as a result, uh, being a very serious Hungarian composer, he was able to incorporate uh, original themes based on the Hungarian uh, sound of folk music. Wow, well, you're really well versed on this. Yes, well, uh, he had uh, men who were composers born ahead of him. Bela uh, 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 Bartok and uh, uh, Kodai. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was able to uh, be inspired by their music because they based, they went out into the fields of Hungary and recorded mm -hmm. the folk music of that country. Great. Um, but he was, I mean, those two men were looking for the real Hungarian music, not the artificial mm -hmm. type of music that uh, a lot of people get confused. The gypsies came through uh, Hungary with their music, and because they were uh, <clears throat> people who were musically inclined, I see. And uh, so as they passed through, they were playing the violin music and the dance music. Mm -hmm. Before we sign off, can you spell his name for us? Because it's a different name. Oh, Miklos? Mm -hmm. And the last yes. name. The accents are on Los and Roche. Mm -hmm. Roche. So they pronounce it Miklos oh. Roja. Wow. Uh, you know, the Hungarian spell way it. of speaking. M I K L O S, mm -hmm. and uh, the accent is they have accents mm -hmm. to uh, over the O in Miklos. Mm -hmm. In Russia, they have the other accent over the uh, uh, O again. But so it's Miklos Rosha. How do you spell the Rosha? R O Z S A. Oh, R O Z S A. Mm -hmm. Well, he's an icon among film composers. God, certainly is. He's great. That's Herbert Butler, ladies and gentlemen, and it's been a pleasure talking to you. Next time we'll talk about another You know, Miklos Rocha not only wrote music for films, but he created music away from the movies at home. Authentic compositions based on Hungarian folk music. Rocha was influenced by Bela Bartok and Zoltan Kodály. Rocha won high honors in Europe for his creations of symphonies, concertos, and chamber music. Miklos Rosa was a genius. Uh, Miklos Rosa, he knew how to score films for any mood or, or, or for the moment. I mean, just listen to the music and sounds of Ben Hur, Kovadis, and Sodom Gomorrah. Those romantic sounds were marvelous. This man knew how to score for a full orchestral sound. Kudos for Mr. Miklos Rosa. My favorite Miklos Rocha film was The Red House with Edward G. Robinson.
Hello from Hollywood, all you Nicklos Rosa fans. We call him Nicky here in Hollywood. Boy, he did some great scoring for some fantastic movies. I loved Adam's Rib. It's my favorite movie because I love to see couples fighting. Mom and Dad were always fighting before they got their divorce. Every night they would fight, but the time they would kiss and make up, it was too late to go anywhere. I love that movie, and because of him, I used to think it was because of me that my parents got divorced, but it really wasn't. I guess I was just being paranoid. But that's a wonderful movie by Michael Rocha. Another one was Story of Three Loves. Oh, man. In fact, after me, my mom named her other kids Eeny, Meeny, and Miney because she's told Dad there ain't no mo. And uh, Liddy was a beautiful, wonderful movie. It reminds me of this angel here on the tree. Oh, it's so beautiful. We had dedicated that Nicholas Rocha, his movie Liddy. But my favorite movie of all time was The VIPs. It was in 1949 that Nicholas Rocha was called over to MGM to write music for the films at that studio before he had been at Paramount and United Artists. But, uh, this time, he um, was at the bigger studio where he was able to accomplish a great deal with his music. Uh, the music that you hear now is the music that Rocha had composed for this MGM movie called Madame Bovary, starring Jennifer Jones, Van Heflin, James Mason, and Louis Jordan. And uh, what a wonderful music, what beautiful music that he composed for that film. You can, t you can hear it as it goes. Now we're hearing a beautiful love theme between Jennifer Jones and her husband in the film, Van Heflin. This is very romantic, French type of romantic music. So lovely with the sweet violins. Here we have Dr. Mikos Rocha here in the Forest Lawn Cemetery. Less assurance is the section and grave number 
1656. Dr. Rocha has eternal rest here, right beside his wife, Margaret Rocha. Wonderful people who have lived together for many years. And so much music was composed by Mr. Rocha during those years. And he was here living in Hollywood. Right now, he rests in peace in the Hollywood Hills of Forest Lawn Cemetery. It's a great honor to be here today to take photographs of Mr. Rocha, Dr. Rocha, and his wife, Margaret. Bless their soul. Please allow me to take another photo of the two graves that we have here. It goes Rosia and his wife Margaret Rosia. Thank you very much. Now we have another picture of the two graves of Dr. Nichols Rosia and his wife Margaret Rosia. I thank you again. Well, here we are again with uh, Dr. Rocha's music pre presentations here from his albums that he uh, had composed uh, music for. He recorded a lot of his music, as you can see here. We have the CDs and the long play uh, albums represented here. And uh, in his lifetime, I mean, he wrote so much music, not only for the cinema, but he also wrote music for the concert hall. And uh, here we have his double life. He's living the life of a, for a concert hall. And uh, wow, what talent this man had. He could hear all this music. And once he made a statement that all he needed was a pencil and a paper to uh, write down his music. He loved it so much, he was able to com compose it. Of course, uh, the piano does help a lot when you're writing music. Most composers go to the piano and they are able to play the chords along with the melody. And so Dr. Rocha used to have a soundproof room that he composes music into. Once I had met him at the uh, Film Institute here in Los Angeles, and uh, he was giving a lecture. And uh, so I asked him a question. I said, uh, is it true, Dr. Rocha, that you compose your music uh, late at night in the soundproof room? And he says, uh, quite uh, <laughs> explicitly and directly, he said, at night, I sleep. My name is Herbert Butler. I have been in love with Dr. Rocha's music since I have been eight years old.